Baton Rouge at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. The reigning national champions begin defense of that title. That's the LSU Tigers. That's our second game. But game one could be a terrific opening battle. Our bracket in Albany two, the number six seed Louisville, an elite 18 last year against dangerous Middle Tennessee. They've won 19 in a row. As we get set to go, the Cardinals coming in at 24 and 9. Middle Tennessee has not lost since December 30. That's how well they've been playing as the Cardinals win the opening tip. And for Middle Tennessee, expect player to player this entire game. They want to push a little off the three-point line and just disrupt them in the half court. Taylor is getting about 11 points a game, tripped and fouled immediately in the opening seconds of the first quarter. Jeff Walls in year number 17 for the Cardinals. Louisville's all-time winningest coach. He has been phenomenal in the NCAA tournament. With a record of 40 and 14, 12 trips to the Sweet 16, eight to the Elite Eight, four to the Final Four. One of the great defensive minds in our game is Jeff Walls. Rick Ensel on the other side, his 19th year from Middle Tennessee. And he has taken them to the NCAA tournament 12 times in the last 19 years. Again, we have two of the greats in our game, and I'm eager to see just the chess match between these two head coaches here this afternoon. I'm eager to see his little granddaughter, Evie, who has <laughs> stolen everybody's heart here on the floor as part of the show on the drive, and that will roll off by Wheeler. Her first attempt, she comes in at 17 points a game, a real star. Taylor. Didn't shoot it. Her cards will pull up and pop, and that won't drop. A rebound tipped to Jefferson in the paint. She will hook that around and finally in. And Jeff Walls told us he wants to get, to get out and try to score in transition. Couldn't get it with the first opportunity, but great job of staying on it and finishing with a putback. Middle Tennessee, the number 11 seed. The four starters will play, as we mentioned, just about the entire game. Four of the, four of the five starters play just about the entire game. As that one will roll off the 10. And a chilly start for the Lady Raiders. And this is where Louisville needs to push pace but not get rushed. Decision-making by the perimeter players is paramount today. And I really think they need to try to get Cochran going here early in this half. The cards on the drive, a little bounce there for two. And that's a good sign because Jeff Wall said we have to hit the shots off the bounce if we're going to get the W here today. And who's going to make the shots and how many shots they make, that's, a, that's an issue for the Cardinals from time to time. Absolutely. I mean, the one consistent thing about the Cardinals this season has been their inconsistency, and that's on both ends of the floor. Boldereva got that one up there. The 6'6 junior from Moscow only averages, oh, 15 and 9. She's had a big year. She's a player I don't think enough of this country knows about. She's so good defensively, and you see she's not coming out of the paint. They're going to give Olivia Cochran that shot from the outside all game long. Well, the river lines up a long one, and that's off the back of the iron. And a rebound by Kiki Jefferson, a 6-1 grad. And the James Madison transfer. Jeff Walls has had a lot of new names and faces this year. And it's a transition. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's active as a transfer portal is, it's a new team every year, and everybody's gelling at different points. Could this be when Louisville puts it all together this weekend? And of course, if, in fact, they can advance and LSU advances, they will clash on Sunday. But look at the notable transfers, Jefferson Taylor, Curry, and Ricards. So that's a lot of new chemistry to develop. Absolutely. The good news is that's four 1,000-point scorers at their previous schools. It's now a matter of can they work together to get the best shot each and every time down. Jayla Gregory letting fly. We talked about her ability to knock down the three and how reliant Middle Tennessee is on the three-pointer. Well, I asked associate head coach Matt Enzel yesterday, who's your X factor? And he said, Jalen Gregory, when she makes shots, we are really difficult to beat. 36% beyond the three-point line. You see Middle Tennessee will ice those on-ball screens. Got that one in tight for Harris. Harris will finish that, the 6'2 sophomore, who makes 57% of his shots, of her shots, and she is certainly very dangerous offensively. And a whistle and a foul in the lane. Boldereva going down there. 6.35 to go here in the first. Harris will pick up foul number one. And 
Louisville on top. Eight to five. Gregory will check it in. And good defense there by Harris. On the deny, she races to the other end. Ball loose on the deck, a tie up on the play. The possession arrow will belong to Middle Tennessee. And great to have you with us here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Eight to five, Louisville has the lead over Middle Tennessee. Dave O'Brien alongside Christy Thomas. Cutty, great to have you alongside. And this should be a real battle because you talk about Louisville, Christy, a team that has had great success in this tournament under Jeff Walls. Four times going to the Final Four, a couple of national championship game appearances as well. But Middle Tennessee has not lost a game since December 30. This is a really good Middle Tennessee team on both sides of the floor. Defensively disruptive, offensively, they want layups and they want three pointers, and they are led by Conference USA player Savannah Wheeler. Lady Raiders with four starters who play 35 minutes or more. And a theft here by Harris, who's been early on defensively, but can't finish the lay-in. And another tie-up. Louisville will have it on a possession arrow as they lead it 10-7. to Harris has been so good, so active defensively, but looks a little sped up when she's getting close to the rim. That's what I meant by earlier. They cannot get sped up by Middle Tennessee's defense. They've got the speed advantage player for player. They've got the height advantage player for player. Now just slow down and convert in the half court. Harris usually makes those shots 57% or field goal percentage for the year. Up top, Cochran lets fly and knocks in a triple. Olivia Cochran, one of Louisville's two returning starters on a team that has many transfers. And Olivia Cochran's first made three of the season, and you're seeing it again. Bolo de Reva is staying in the paint. That's a shot that Middle Tennessee is willing to give up to the Cardinals. Anastasia Bolo Reva, 6'6", junior from Moscow, and a key part of Middle Tennessee's attack. That's going to be a three-second violation. 5.08 to go here in the first. Well, Jeff Wall said they have to be able to make some shots in the mid-range. Well, Olivia Cochran says, I'll do you one better, coach, and step out to the three. They're willing and able to make Cochran beat them from the outside. So far, Cochran's answering the bell. Look how far Middle Tennessee is extending the Louisville offense. Sidney Taylor drops that in. On a slick move, the 5'9 grad out of Long Island. The UMass transfer, one of those new faces for Jeff Walls, who's in his 17th year, Louisville's all-time winning his coach. Up against the true veteran in Rick Ensel, his 19th year for Middle Tennessee. Scott on the attack. Very good three-point marks person, but can't get that one to go from two-point range. Harris on a run, getting in close, and will drop it in. That's a 9-0 run now for Louisville. And that's just all post-to-post -post action by the Louisville Bigs. Cochran starting the break. Harris finishing it. Whitson turns the fire. Got a good look. Courtney Whitson, outstanding rebounder, has 1,000 in her career, but can't knock back to three. Curry missed Harris down low. She had the seal, didn't get the feed. Now gets called for the three seconds. So it'll go the other way. This is very disappointing. If <laughs> this is what Kim Mulkey is going to show up in for game time, I am going to be really disappointed. That's just got to be pregame stuff, right? It says so much of the expectations that Kim Mulkey has established around the country <laughs> for her wardrobe that my partner is disappointed right. in a really nice suit that she is wearing. The but it's suit, not enough. It's suit's not, beautiful, but, you know, it's not Kim, right? You want more pizzazz. That's what they want. I want pizzazz and sequins. That's going to be an offensive foul. That game coming up at 4 o'clock against Rice. The fans are certainly ready. And when they start packing the building, this place is going to be rocking at 4 o'clock. You know there's going to be a lot of that. Coach Mulkey is locked in. Jenny Gregory with the foul on the other end from Middle Tennessee. Louisville trying to build on a bunch of turnovers here for the Lady Raiders. And now in the half court, one thing Middle Tennessee said yesterday, we are not going to defend the screeners. We want to keep it packed in and try to defend the paint. Into the backcourt and a turnover here for Louisville. And that's been a big issue for Coach Walls all season long. 
National runner up twice in his career in 09 and in 13. And 12 trips to the Sweet 16. He has done phenomenal work. And he said to us yesterday, he said, we need to limit turnovers to 12 to 14 in this game and minimize the unforced. That's what happened on the last one. Unforced turnover by Louisville. Savannah Wheeler, who has been the star for the Lady Raiders, 17 points a game, Conference USA Player of the Year with a miss on the other end. That's going to rattle in by Jada Curry, who makes 39% best of the team. She had 26 last game against Notre Dame in the ACC tournament. Wheeler on the drive. Tough shot, difficult angle. Rebound tip to Scott, who can't finish it. And the Cardinals really crashing a glass and another whistle. Grabowski will be hit with a personal here. The they first. talked about the transfer impact for Louisville. This time, Jada Curry spots up, and you see Savannah Wheeler packing it in the paint. So she's late on the closeout to get out to Curry, and Curry gets the big three for Louisville. So Louisville working on a 12 nothing run, and the lead has ballooned to 20 to seven. This is a game on paper that figured to be a very, very tough day for the Cardinals, as good as they've been in the NCAA tournament. Absolutely. But for Middle Tennessee, this is a team that can get hot in a hurry because they love the three ball. So I don't think they're out of this game by any means. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. And I do want to credit Louisville's defense so far. We saw the high on ball screen. They're switching off of that. They are containing Wheeler so far, and they're doing a good job of team defense against the star player. Gregory, one of those three-point threats. Can't knock it down, but a foul. Istanbul will get hit with the personal. That'll be number one on her. Hitting Gregory in the act of attempting a three-point shot. So she'll be at the line for three. And because Jefferson got hit with that screen, Istanbul comes out to defend Gregory. And there wasn't a lot of contact there from what I could see. No. First one up and good for Gregory. Makes 91% of the line. Aliff agrees with me on that. Both of her parents played professional basketball in Turkey. And somewhere they're going, that, that wasn't a foul. <laughs> Gregory's second team, All-Conference USA. She has taken 320 shots, Christy. 246 of those from three-point land. For my calculations, three count more anyway. So she's doing quick math. And great at the foul line. Those are their first points in over four minutes. And so you're seeing some full-court pressure after the made free throw by Middle Tennessee. Russell out of the double, got out of the trap. Curry on the attack. And Louisville could have an even larger lead at this point. They missed some wide open shots. Wheeler slamming on the brakes and lost her footing and traveled with it. That's five turnovers already for Middle Tennessee. And this is a Middle Tennessee team that only averages 12 a game, and that's mainly because the ball's in Savannah Wheeler's hands so much. That time just got caught going and trying to do a little bit too much too fast versus having a true read before she killed her dribble. Wheeler has scored over 2,000 points. She had a great career at Middle Tennessee. Sean Bulalo did a nice job getting out of another trap. Here's Curry to back it outside the three. Shot clock down to 10. And Great. a swing for Jefferson, knocking it down, the three. Great extra pass there. Gave up a good shot to get a great shot for Louisville. Meanwhile, Middle Tennessee has not hit a field goal since the 6-10 mark. So it has been a while. Gregory using the window to lay in two. And you can see Louisville wants to run Gregory off the three-point line, and she's doing a good job of reading it and getting to the rim that time to finish. Curry trying to find that lane. Trips, and Wheeler with the personal. That'll be her first. Uh, Jada Curry went sprawling. It's actually going to be number two. 
And I expect Griffin to leave Wheeler on the floor. He has the utmost confidence in his point guard. Can Louisville go at her and try to get a third here in this first quarter? Melissa Russell back on the floor. Uh, Sydney Taylor goes to the bench for Coach Walls. And the Cardinals put it in. Louisville, the number six seed. Istanbul will hit that one, the three pointer. That's not something they rely on that much, only 32%, but she got a really good look. Absolutely. And her minutes keep going up as we've gotten later and later into the season. 26 12, the bill. Taken away in another theft. Russell all the way through and right in front of the horn. She got it off in time. 28 to 12, what an ending to the first quarter. A big first for the number 16, Louisville. It's averaging almost nine threes a game, and they put up 24. This is how good Louisville's defense has been. They've been on point in their switches in the half court to take away open looks. They're only one for four outside the three-point line, and they're so reliant on it. And another whistle. Rick Insel told us at practice yesterday, we would rather shoot a three than a layup any day of the week. Again, threes count more. Got to hit him. Exactly. But what I was shocked at, I said, ideally, how many do you want to shoot? And he said, well, more than we're shooting right now. Even more, yeah. Even more than 24 a game. Which is a ton. Harris, foul number two. And look at their numbers this season in the makes. You know, number one in Conference USA. And shooting a ton of those, 35% overall. So they're good there. What you just saw in the out of bounds play, Louisville's been assignment specific on their switches so far. They've been really good sticking to the game plan. Cochran hit the deck, shot clock inside 10. They swing for the corner, and that's going to be swished in by Gregory. So that's certainly how they're going to climb back in this game, as you mentioned, from the three point line. Absolutely. And then again, you caught Louisville in a scramble mode because Cochran hit the floor, and they found the open player, Gregory, this time for three. Louisville certainly with superior depth. As Curry has it around the logo. 28-15 getting underway here in the second quarter. And Baton Rouge. Curry will dribble it out. Shot clock a factor now. Cochran on the move, a little fall away. Got it! So for the second time in the game, they have beat the clock. And this is where you see the improvement of Olivia Cochran this season. Her ability off the bounce. That was just a fabulous move to create space and knock it down. Savannah Wheeler finding it very tough sledding. Cochran came over to help out in the lane. So for the Conference USA Player of the Year, a difficult start here to her NCAA tournament. It's a team that beat Tennessee 73-62. to That's their biggest win. Gregory shot clock down to one and too strong. And a fight for the rebound and a whistle foul to go against Curry of Louisville. Well, Jeff Walls has said, as Olivia Cochran's leadership, as far as it'll take us, we will go. And this time, shot clock running down. No worry, Olivia Cochran's got the two. Her mom, Tara Williams, was all SEC at Auburn. Her dad, Antonio, was an NFL lineman for six years. Count that. So trying to make a comeback here in the second quarter and an opportunity for a three-point play. Courtney Whitson headed to the line, a foul by Cochran. Courtney Winston just slips through the double stack there, and she knows she's got Cochran on her backside, so just powers it up for the and one opportunity. I mentioned Winston, 1,000 rebounds in her career, also over 1,500 points. She's had a heck of a run. Absolutely. I mean, it has been a catalyst for the Middle Tennessee defense and offense throughout her career. Gina requires with it the grad out of Queens. See Gregory trying to deny Kiki Jefferson the ball. Jefferson threw the pass away, picked off by Grabowski, and now she drags the foot and a traveling violation. 6'5 sophomore from Russia, Middle Tennessee recruits outside the United States exceptionally well. Absolutely. They have seven international players on their team, third most in the nation as far as women's basketball teams. Rick Insel's son, Matt, is the associate head coach and recruiting guru who gets it done. Maybe their future head coach. We shall see. 
Knocked away from Jefferson, but she'll make a move on the baseline. Istanbulalu. Not there for her. Good position underneath for Cochran. That was a grown woman rebound by Olivia Cochran. Went up, got it, and put it up quickly, knowing that she's undersized against the bigs of Middle Tennessee. See if Wheeler can get going. The unquestioned star for Middle Tennessee. Scott, dangerous from three as well, taking it hard into the lane and backs it in. Boy, was that a tough shot. Absolutely. Great rotation by Olivia Cochran. Didn't matter because Scott put it up and in. 12.6 rebounds a game for the six-footer. Backdoor cut. Jefferson draws the foul. And Kiki Jefferson will be headed to the line, which is really good at 89%. Offensive rebounding by Olivia Cochran. You see her working on the position as the ball's in the air, so she knew she had the position to put it up and in. And then Scott getting to that dominant right hand. Doesn't matter the rotation's there because she had the will to put that one up and in. Tamina Scott can be a star in any game. At 26 against Sam Houston, 26 against Western Kentucky. She's had some big games. Well, and again, we talked about the starters for Middle Tennessee. Ideally, Rick Enzo wants to play them all 40 minutes, so they've got opportunities. He, they know if they don't start strong, they're going to stay in the game. So that relaxes these players, and they can go on big runs in a hurry. And then reigning national champ LSU will be on this floor at 4 o'clock in front of what we expect to be a packed house in Baton Rouge, as it always is when they're on the floor. And that's going to go the other way. Decanter. The great D. Cantor on the floor is one of the officials, and the great Kim Mulkey. An incredible career as a player, associate, or assistant head coach. Of course, as a head coach, she has done it all, including recently getting tossed out of a Savannah Bananas game. <laughs> tossed out. We've got video of that. Here's Wheeler, and in and out with a triple. Global in transition. Cochran will swing it. Russell looking to make a move into the paint from the elbow is going to back that home. And that's the mid-range jumper that Jeff Wall said we have to be able to make if we're going to get a win. Great job by Russell. Still a pretty comfortable lead here for the Cardinals here in round one of the NCAA tournament. Oldareva looking to make a move at a travel. 6'6 junior from Moscow. Marissa Russell with a crossover and it's going downhill so fast that Scott thinks she's going to go all the way to the rim. That's what gave her the space to elevate and knock it in. Jeff Walls first got to see her in the 2019 FIBA World Cup in Thailand when his USA squad met Team Canada in the quarterfinals in Bangkok. And thought, well, I might want to bring her to Louisville. Wheeler will direct traffic 35 to 20. And her shots have been really hard to make. Every one of them a challenge shot. Well, Louisville has scouted her so well. They're playing her tendency so well in terms of how and what she wants to do off those high on ball screens. Wheeler just made a terrific save. Got the pass free, but an air mail there by Scott. And that'll go the other way. They never got to the iron. This is the Middle Tennessee team that won in Conference USA play by an average of 23 points a game. Their closest game since the first game in overtime against La Tech in conference play was in the semis against La Tech. And I asked Rick Enzo about that. I said, was it good for your team to have a close game? He said, yeah, we needed to learn to play through that. But I don't think they've learned to play down this much this season. So why I'm saying that, I thought that was a really bad shot by Scott. Just forced that action. Well, they're an official timeout here. Marissa Russell being checked out. And the Ville on top by 15 here in the second. And she is going to take a seat. And Jada Curry will come on for Jeff Walls. A lot of other players with a lot more recognition than Russell does. But she is such a glue player for Louisville. And you just see her working so hard in transition with the save. And she probably just tweaked that foot, unfortunately. I'll tell you what she also did. She took somebody out on the baseline, a photog down there. You've seen Louisville with a lot of back cuts, and that's because Middle Tennessee likes to overplay the passing lanes. Taylor off the mark. 
A second opportunity here. They'll swing it back up for Taylor. Istanbulalu will let fly, but it's not there. Boldareva with the rebound. Middle Tennessee used to holding opponents down. Only 54 points a game against them for the season. And usually they're really, really tough to get off a three. 29% their three point defense, but Cardinals have had a much better time of it today. Here's Wheeler to let fly, but that won't go. A second chance. Whitson. Whitson in strong, but no. Great job by Cochran to keep her position there and get that block on that putback. Cochran is open. Decided not to shoot it. That's a deflection off the leg of Middle Tennessee's Gregory. And we've got a timeout. 4.26 to go before halftime. Yeah, and for now. Eldre and everybody's All-American back in the studio. As we look forward to halftime. Right on the money by Russell with a three-pointer. And this is the largest lead here in the first half for Louisville. Louisville now five of nine from deep in this game. Again, Middle Tennessee won 29 games, went 16 and 0 in Conference USA. They have not lost a game since the 30th of December. They won 19 straight games. One and done there, and here come the Cardinals again in transition. There's going to be a travel here. Uh, Nina Ricards, if you look at our Dick's need to know, 18 point lead brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods and Middle Tennessee seeking their first NCAA win since 07. Louisville seeking a sixth consecutive Elite Eight berth. And of course, later on, it'll be LSU looking to go back to back. First time since UConn won three in a row. Scott making it 38 to 22. Uphill though for the Lady Raiders. Sydney Taylor, the UMass transfer. Cochran off the fake on the attack. Couldn't finish it. She takes a tumble. Middle's got numbers. Well, Louisville did a great job getting back. I've been impressed with Louisville's defense. As I said earlier, Middle Tennessee runs a lot of screens, and they've been, except for this time, so good at getting through them. Gregory with the hot hand. That brings out a timeout by Coach Walls on the Louisville sideline as they have cut into this a bit, 38 to 25. And Jalen Gregory with the triple. So we'll see if that is a sign that the Lady Raiders are starting to heat up at last. Louisville shooting 54%. Cochran with nine and six for Louisville. Middle Tennessee really relying on the three-pointer, but just three for ten, and Louisville five out of nine. And this goes back to how good Gregory has been. She's three of five. The rest of the team 0 for five already in this game. It was a good read by Gregory, but just a great switch out by Jefferson to take away any shot opportunity. Well, Reba has been pretty quiet, lost it. Got it back. She'll turn and fire. I barely nicked the iron, though. That's not a good shot. Perry will set it up. Very, very dangerous from three as well. On the Louisville side. Russell looking in. Shot clock down to nine. Long one coming, Russell off the back of that rim. Nice trail. She decided not to I'm, shoot it. I'm surprised there. So under 90 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Jumper here by Whitson knocked away on the deflection. Russell getting on top of that in a hurry. Their defense has been so stout. Russell's been active on offense, but this time, quick closeout to get the block. Whitson had that shot, but just great pursuit by Russell there to get the block. Cardinals have won a lot of their 24 games on defense. They're holding opponents to 63 points. 
And only 30% from the three-point line. Wheeler keeps on trucking as Savannah Wheeler will lay it in. And remarkably enough, that is Savannah Wheeler's first two points of this ball game. Can she get going? And they close the gap to 38 to 27. It's a 7-0 run for Middle Tennessee. So they're jumping back in this game. Here's Curry. Got a look. That won't drop. And she came in and committed the foul. And she went flying into the play. If you're a Middle Tennessee fan, you are loving this last play because it is Savannah Wheeler using the middle of the court on-ball screen. What Middle did is they dropped that on-ball a little bit deeper that time where Carnes was not ready for it. So 55.8 to go before halftime. And Middle Tennessee making a move here. And uh, Grabowski will go to the line, a 6'4 sophomore. Who's had a handful of games that show she could be a real impact player, particularly on a glass. Just 16 rebound game against UTEP and nine against New Mexico State. At the line, 69%. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. Lady Raiders not helping himself on the line there with a couple of misses where cards out high for the Cardinals. Magic number for Louisville is 70 points. At least. At least <laughs> Jeff Wallace made sure he clarified at least we may need to go much higher against a really good Middle Tennessee offense, he said. Four to get off a shot. The swing for Russell. This is way downtown, and that didn't touch anything. So shot clock violation. And Middle Tennessee. Trying to get inside double figures here. I'm going to bring another big back on. Boldareba, the 6'6 junior. I need Boldareba to have a much shorter memory right now. She needs to get going offensively, looking for her opportunities when she gets it. Ten seconds before halftime. Middle Tennessee grabbing some momentum here. Here's Gregory, certainly been the star of the first half. Can't sink that one, it's over the top of the backboard. So 38-27. Point one, this would have to be a tip by Louisville. And will not try to heave it. Louisville winds up with that 38-27 lead at the break, but Middle Tennessee and a 7-0 run going into the half. Olivia Cochran has been the lead six. Somehow, Wheeler and Anastasia have got to get going here this second half for the Blue Raiders. Middle Tennessee, only six players appeared in the game in the first half. That is not unusual for them. Global opens up with a basketball in the second half. Taylor with a bounce speed into the lane and a quick strike. Cochran hitting the deck. But a terrific pass to make it 40 to 27, and Cochran with 11 and 7. To Mia Scott, one of those for Rick Insel, is going to have to get hot here in the second half. Whitson trying to dump it downstairs, and a whistle. And a foul here against the Cardinals, and that'll go against Cochran. Well, Dave, we talked about how active Olivia Cochran's been. You see the high on ball screen and then the roll, and she's immediately opening up because she knows that Jefferson attracted her defender. That's what left her open to get to the rim. Over the top for Wheeler, who had a rough half. One for seven from the field. And it scored just two points. She came in averaging 17 and threw that one away. Harris with the pick. And that's the second time the Blue Raiders have tried to get the pass from the high post into Anastasia. And Hayes has just used her athleticism and foot speed to get around and force the turnover. Jefferson on the attack at a difficult angle. Wheeler to push the tempo. Trying to go all the way. Can't finish it, though. And a tie up here. Possession arrow will keep it on this end. Great effort by Courtney Whitson there just to maintain or try to maintain possession of the ball, forces the tie up. Middle Tennessee has not tasted defeat 
since December 30th. They've won 19 consecutive games. They won their conference regular season and league tournament in Conference USA. They clinched the automatic bid for the third time in four years. And another whistle here just moments into the second half. As Gregory gets going, a hard foul. Well, at, at some point, somebody else has got to help Jalen Gregory out. But she's saying right now, jump on my back. I'm going to get us back in this game. Sydney Taylor, number one. And then Gregory at the line, where she's outstanding, 91%. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship first round continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and Troop TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Kentucky knocked out of the tournament. Yeah, big loss. I mean, SEC had a really tough day on the men's side yesterday. Meanwhile, NC State were the darlings in Washington, D.C., the ACC tournament. They won again in round one. Taken away. Here come the Lady Raiders on the attack. Savannah Wheeler, 2,000 points in her career. The, the point guard has had a rough one. She can certainly heat up. I can't say enough about how well Louisville has defended the high on ball screen. It's a big part of the Blue Raiders offense. Wheeler launching, got it. Middle Tennessee fans are delighted by that. She makes 38% from three. McCarthy's giving up the dribble. Here's Sydney Taylor. Taylor, the 5'9 grab from the baseline. Good ball movement up top for Jefferson. And now Cochran. Got a good look. That won't drop for her. Middle Tennessee within eight here in the third quarter. Whitson. Wheeler just hit that triple a moment ago on the drive and draws the foul. And she is an 86% foul shooter headed to the strike. I felt like that was a big possession defensively for Louisville because momentum has started to shift. And who else but Wheeler looking to get downhill and claim her because I thought Cochran went straight up, but she kind of jumped into the body against the foul. It's her third. Big news for Louisville. Olivia Cochran, their star of the first half. She is staying in. 7.21 to go in the third. 7 nothing run here. So this has become a six-point game. Good job right in front of us by Jada Curry to deflect that off Middle Tennessee and keep the ball. And then go back to the end of the first half. It's a 14-2 run. Well, overall, Louisville's done a good job against the full court pressure of Middle. That time, Jada Curry got really lucky that she was able to bounce it off the defender's foot. Curry. Drives the scoop. Yes, pretty, sh pretty shot on that one. Got that one to go. We're seeing here now opening up the third quarter. Louisville using a lot of the high on ball screen action to get to the rim and score. 42 34. Wheeler cross court. Gregory, the open shooter, gets another one as she drills another three pointer. And credit Wheeler for the assist there because she kept her head up, knew that two players had come to her, that forced rotations. Gregory with yet another three. Lady Raiders within five. Curry looking for an answer, and it's too strong. Rebound loose and a whistle. Foul on the floor. 42 37. When we talked about Wheeler's assist numbers, five coming into the day. Cross-court pass to Jalen Gregory because the defense collapsed and rotated to Wheeler. That left the weak side open. Gregory spotted up, knocked it down. Courtney Whitson with a foul for Middle Tennessee. So Louisville has possession. Nearly stolen away there by a very active Gregory. She's been everywhere. In some ways, she's been everything for the Blue Raiders here this afternoon. Cochran off the fake. 
Her fall away. Short. Middle Tennessee with the momentum. Wheeler backing it out of there. The number 11 seed getting right back in the thick of this game. LSU and Rice to play at four here at Pete Maravich Assembly Center. That'll be our second game and another whistle. That was with eight on the shot clock. So if that's going to be on Cochran, that's number four. Indeed it is on Olivia Cochran, the 6'3 senior, has to sit. You see Cochran and Anastasia battling there. Oh, I agree with the call. Cochran definitely hooked the arm there. Nice catch by the official. And so they're 14 foul. Another tie-up. Possession arrow will take it to the other end. So 5.50 to go and a key player in Olivia Cochran on the bench. It's 11.7 rebounds a game for Jeff Walls. But they have the basketball. Istanbulalu gets it on top of Ricards. Looking for someone to make a move in that paint. And another tie-up. Man, we've had a, 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 a bunch of these jumps here in the second half. It will be Middle Tennessee ball. And we have a timeout. 5.28 to go in the third. And this one is tapping about 10 minutes ago. She's wide awake now. I'm going out on a limb here. I think Kim Mulkey saw Evie's outfit and knew she couldn't compete, and so she went down to the more tame pastel. The only time that Kim would ever think about taking second place. <laughs> Even entertain the thought, but Evie participates with the Middle Tennessee players as if she's on the team and she's going to play 25 minutes. And you're not going to tell her anything different to that thought process. And meanwhile, the Lady Raiders have really woken up. They were down 28 to 12 at the end of the first. Since then, they have a 25-14 advantage. And you're seeing just the movement in the half-court offense, a little bit quicker on getting to screens and getting to the rim. Unfortunately, Scott not finishing. So the Cardinals trying to find their offense again. The card's on the dribble. She'll drive it and finish it. Popped it in there. So she has four, 44-37. Wheeler backing off to shoot a long one. Got it. Well, she is starting to hit some shots at last. Well, Middle Tennessee trying to get hot from the three-point line. Now three of three here in the third quarter. Wheeler with eight in the third after two points in the first half. And this is a four-point contest. This is more like the game we thought we were going to see. Ricard's dropping down, and another one tied up. Possession arrow will flip to the other end. It will be Louisville ball. Not led for a second in this game yet, but Gregory has been tremendous with 19. They've attempted almost 250 more three-pointers than their opponents this year. And again, I'll go back to what Coach Enzel said to us. I want more. They break the pressure. So looking to get even closer. Savannah Wheeler has started to shoot it. 17 points a game, Conference USA Player of the Year. And you're seeing Louisville come out in a 2-3 matchup here out of that timeout. And then they fall back into the play of the player. Harris will be hit with a personal. Nyla Harris, 6-2 sophomore with her third, looking to deny on the entry. I think that's the hook again. I think Harris had the hook, and if you're a Louisville fan, you do not want to see this for a Middle Tennessee team that has struggled to score today. Don't put them at the free throw line, which they will be for the rest of this quarter. Anastasia Boldareva at the line, the 6'6 junior from Moscow, hitting number one. And he makes 56%. Made one of two. That'll be tapped out by Middle Tennessee. So a three-point contest. Rick Insel, year number 19. His team has not advanced to the second round of this tournament since 2007. 
They've gone 12 in the last 19 years, but look at the knockoff Louisville. Russell gets popped there. It was before the shot. Older Raber reaching in and commits her first. So 3.23 to go in the third here at Pete Maravich Assembly Center. The crowd continues to gather. Big crowd expected for the 4 o'clock tip. LSU on the floor, the reigning champions. Here's Sidney Taylor. Taylor looking to make a move and held up and foul by Gregory. Number two on Gregory. Okay, we were talking about over the break. Where's the offense going to come from from Louisville? But two quick fouls inches them a little bit closer to getting into the bonus and hopefully getting some free points. They're both good foul shooting teams. Louisville at 75%. Middle Tennessee 78%. If it comes down to shooting free throws. Taylor. Harris trying to get in tight. Got too far underneath the iron. And yet another jump. And that possession arrow is being absolutely worn out today. <laughs> we'll stay right here. Well, this was a great rotation by Scott. That's what forced the miss by Harris for what should have been an easy two. Hand off for Taylor. Istanbululu gets fouled as she went in and will head to the line. The 6'3 senior from Turkey. And that'll be foul number one on Tamiya Scott. To put the senior to the stripe here. And she is a 64% foul shooter. Looks good on number one for the fourth straight year. Every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. We'll go back to the championship game with Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Last year, about 10 million tuned in at its height, at its peak. It was more like 13, 14 million fans. Incredible. Do you think Angel's watching the South Carolina game or the Duke game right now? On her phone. I'll, I'll bet she's finding a way to do both. <laughs> Multitasking, so to speak, and that'll be kicked, and it'll go the other way. That was off Savannah Wheeler's foot. Well, for both point guards on each team, you've got to be ready after a free throw because we've seen both teams extended the full court pressure, and Louisville just speeding up Wheeler there off her foot. Curry. Curry on the dribble. Another great loose defense. ball. Yeah, great D there by Middle Tennessee to pluck that free. And another whistle. And a foul here against Louisville. They're piling up those fouls. Middle Tennessee's been consistent with icing the on-ball screen. And Whitson just right place to get the block. And this is at least the second time this game where Curry has made a mistake. And then she's compounded it by drawing the foul afterwards. That's her third. So Jeff Walls is starting to get very concerned about foul trouble. As we mentioned, Middle Tennessee real good at the line as a team, up near 80%. Courtney Whitson makes 78%. A six-foot grad can be a very dangerous scorer. She makes one of two. A four-point game. And again, if you're just tuning in, Middle Tennessee, the number 11 seed, Louisville the number six seed. That gets free. It's down Bulalu down low for two. Great heads up play by her cards. Realized that she had three defenders around her. Someone had to be open. Kept her head up. Found her post wide open at the rim. Under two minutes to go. Third quarter. Launching Wheeler. And that's going to spin in. Wheeler starting to fill it. Held that follow through after that one. Her cards a determined drive. Not there. Three on two. Wheeler kicks it. Scott can't finish, but a foul on the play. The foul against the Cardinals. 
Middle Tennessee big time momentum. And so Scott, who makes 80% of her foul shots, goes to the line for three. Well, it started with the missed layup on the other end, so that forced Louisville into chase mode. And you see where cards come across, and I'm not sure there was a lot of contact. I thought it was pretty good acting by Scott afterwards. To me, a Scott, All Conference USA, 80% at the line, makes the first two, another one coming. And she can tie this game right here. What a comeback here from Middle Tennessee State. And they have tied this game. And in this quarter, they have outscored Louisville 21 to 10. And I'm not sure if these are LSU fans or these are all the Middle Tennessee fans, but they're starting to get loud here in the PMAC. Russell with a jumper, well short. Out it goes, back over to Middle Tennessee. Just shot selection is really important for Louisville right now to take the best shot, not the shot that Middle Tennessee wants them. Because Middle Tennessee has said, we want to force them late in shot clocks and force them into bad shots in this game. Louisville had an 18-point lead in the first half. Look at the margin in the first quarter and since then for the Lady Raiders. Unbelievable. And so Louisville extending into some full court player to player and a little bit of run and jump here. They put it in the hands of Savannah Wheeler, their star, trying to grab a lead for the first time today in a round one duel. Mobley in the game for the first time as a post up for Louisville. Shot clock down to six. Wheeler looking off a ray. What a tough shot! And their first lead today from Middle Tennessee, 50 to 48 on an eight-nothing run. Well, this has been something to watch. At various times, it looked like Louisville was in complete control, but foul trouble and big shot making by Middle Tennessee has turned the tide. Ricards has it blocked. Loose ball in the lane. Ricards trying to get free and a whistle. And a reach in foul on the Lady Raiders in the paint. 21 seconds to go in the third. The foul on Wheeler, her third, but boy, did she take it strong. Off of the high up ball screen, and then on the other end, it is the leading shot blocker in Conference USA, Bodareva, protecting that rim. 95 block shots. The cards makes that one. And we'll have another one coming. Lena Ricard, 71%. And makes the pair. So we are retied. Final seconds of the third. Wheeler trying to get out of that trap. Draws the foul. Ricard's with another personal. And the Cardinals just can't stop fouling. Well, and I think Wheeler's deceptively quick. And that angle wasn't exactly on point by Ricard's that time. And so if she had just had a better angle, she would have got there in time. But Wheeler. Beat you to that spot, draws the foul. And that was 17.9 seconds. You saw Middle Tennessee with a huge advantage shooting foul shots. Wheeler at 86% missing that one. In this quarter, Middle Tennessee with a big foul shooting lead. They've made 13. And they lead by a point. Savannah Wheeler has really come alive in this third quarter for Middle Tennessee, the 11 seed, trying to knock off the 6 seed here in round one. Last seconds of the third, Ricards with a pull up and it rolls off the iron and that's it for the third quarter. Middle Tennessee with a marvelous comeback. Savannah Wheeler leading the way with 14 of their 16 in the third. His assistant head coach. And next year, they've got the 2022 Tennessee Miss Basketball, Savannah Davis coming in. So things looking even brighter. That three-pointer won't go. Cochran is on the floor here for Louisville. Olivia Cochran playing with four fouls. The entry to her and hits it. 
And I love that. If you're going to put her back in, get her the ball. Great execution by Louisville to find their post player. Give her 13. Wheeler, who's been sensational, giving it up here to Whitson. I also think some of Wheeler's ability to make some of these decisions has been because Cochran's on the bench, because Cochran's done such a good job of defending the lane line. And oh yeah, when she's on offense, she's been really good too. Just using her body, sealing the post high, leading that pass, getting the score. We'll see if that continues as the Cardinals look for someone to step it up offensively. They lead by one, just getting underway here in the fourth quarter. Curry on the drive, stepping in that lane, but no. Wheeler quickly to the other end of the floor and draws the foul. Savannah Wheeler headed to the line as Ricards commits the personal. Here's one thing. Louisville talked a lot about how Savannah Wheeler's so good in her right hand, but it hasn't mattered. Louisville hasn't consistently in this second half been able to take that away. Let her stay on the right, was able to get all the way to the rim and draw the foul. So the 5-6 grab from Kentucky knocks the first one down to tie it up again. 17 points right at her average now. She only had two in the first half. And for long stretches of that half, as she puts them in front, she looked lost. But man, at halftime, she figured it out. Well, and it was a quick halftime discussion by Middle Tennessee. They were back on the floor with eight minutes to go at the 15-minute halftime. And that's when right then I knew Middle Tennessee knows who they are. They know what they want to do. And I'm sure that was the message. Let's just start playing. Foul before the shot. You mentioned when they came out, we're looking up at the clock like eight minutes before they start. That is a long, long time. Nobody does that. Well, to me, that means there were very few adjustments. It was probably more mental and really calming down this team and just getting them to regroup. And again, what I would love to know is what exactly was said because yeah. it has worked to perfection here in the second half so far. Sure has. They're up by a point. Louisville with the ball. Whitson just committed the foul moments ago for the Lady Raiders. Curry blocked away. Boldareva making her presence felt on the defensive end. Maybe not offensively, which averages 15 a game, but outstanding defender. Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. Savannah Wheeler looking for room. Coming up on eight minutes to go in anybody's game here in round one of the NCAA tournament. Boldareva launching too strong. Cards pushing the tempo and now picks up the dribble. Here's City Taylor. Again, it's Cochran turning. Got it. They look like Louisville means to play through her in this last quarter. Absolutely, and I love how well Olivia Cochran has been utilizing the reverse pivot here. That has enabled her to create space over the much longer 6-6 defender. Jalen Gregory really brought them back. That's going to be an offensive foul. Holden Raymond, the 6'6 junior from Russia, commits the personal number two. Well, Cochran first tried to get the call against her and then doesn't get it. So the ball goes into Boulder Reva, and you see the rotation. I like the call. And you see Cochran trying to get a call there, but to no avail, but her teammate gets the assist for her. So Louisville by one and the ball. Russell fires it. Got a good look. Can't deny that, but it would not drop. Scott handing off for Wheeler. I asked Jeff Walls yesterday, I said, can you just keep the ball out of Wheeler's hands? And he just laughed at me. He said, no, she's too good. So we've got other ways that we're going to try to limit her. Posted her first career double-double. Waited to do it until this year. She's a graduate. Did it against Tennessee. Boldareva on the entry will drop in too, using her size. Boldareva, I mean, she struggled here early in this game, but she's got the three. You see the good footwork around the rim. Her length is such an advantage for her when she can seal a low post defender, as we just saw. The cards off the dribble, and that's going to be an offensive. That will go the other way. Middle Tennessee will have the ball. Six and a half minutes to go. You see Nina Ricards trying to create a good call as a push-off. 
Ricky Jefferson to check back in for Jeff Walls in Louisville here in a moment. Bodareva again for two. They did a great job of the entry to get it to her. And Middle Tennessee has opened up a 57-54 lead. The Cardinals looking for an answer. Cochran on the strong drive. Denied. Knocked out. Louisville will keep it. Anastasia the Boulder Raven knows that Cochran's got the two. And you can tell Middle Tennessee's just going to the post player in, down low. And that pass was pinpoint perfect because the weak side defender was coming in. And her teammates are loving it. Try to win their 20th consecutive game, Middle Tennessee. And yet, in the first half, they were down as many as 18. Russell with the shot clock winding down. The Lady Raiders under five and a half to go in this contest. And they lead by three. And another foul. This one will go against Curry. Just a ton of second half fouls for the Cardinals. That's her fourth. And I'll just say not smart fouls. But that one by Curry. Just keep Wheeler in front of you trying to get the steal there and gets called for the foul. Cochran getting a breather. Playing with those four. As you get a look at the foul trouble here for the Ville. Clean look here for Whitson. That won't drop. Big rebound underneath there by Scott, but can't get it. Once again, Whitson came out of nowhere, and she'll draw yet another foul with 5-11 left. And she will be at the line to shoot. Foul will go against Russell on a hustle play. Whitson averages just under two offensive rebounds, already up to three, and this one's huge for the Blue Raiders. So Cochran with a very short rest right back on. And it'll roll off the rim for Whitson. Missed the pair. 57-54. Lobo trying to tie it, but they'll turn it over on a traveling violation. So each side now with 12, the turnover by Nyla Harris. Under five minutes to play. This is not a surprise for people who have followed Middle Tennessee all season long. Everybody knew they were going to be a very, very tough out. That's a travel. Odereva shuffling the feet. And we will take a timeout. As well, 446 remaining in the NCAA Women's Championship is presented by over here in the second half. She had two points in the first half. She has 16 in the game. That'll be short for Taylor. The tie for the third largest comeback in women's NCAA tournament history. Texas A&M number one in 2017. In the second half, Louisville just six for 22. And Wheeler picking up foul number four. So that's big news. There are a lot of key players in this game piling up fouls. And here's another one, which will go against Louisville. Sydney Taylor. That's number two on her, but Louisville with three players playing with four fouls. You know, and I go back to what Jeff Walls said yesterday to us. 12 to 14 unforced turnovers. That was not a smart turnover by Louisville. Four nineteen remaining. Middle Tennessee with the ball and leading by three. Not like the last possession defensively by Louisville. Going double wheeler. Make her get rid of the ball. Scott hands off for Wheeler. The hot hand certainly. As she has been all season long. Another trap. Got free of it. Whitson open. Can't stick it. 
most coaches will tell you, you don't want the best player to beat you. So I like the trapping of the on-ball screen now by Louisville. Louisville one and done on the misfire by Curry. Russell goes down, so numbers here for the Lady Raiders. Can they take advantage out of the corner? Whitson, they do with a three-pointer. And don't look now, but Middle Tennessee leads Louisville by six on a seven-nothing run. They have completely turned the tie in this one. Curry just missed Cochran. She was wide open down low. Curry on the dribble, gives it up. Shot clock to six. Taylor, they find Cochran again, going in strong but denied. It's knocked out of play off the Lady Raiders with one on the shot clock. So the Cardinals are going to have to hustle. Cards back on the floor now for Jeff Walls. And there is time for a catch and shoot here by Louisville. I expect some kind of lob to make a quick up and in. 3-12 to play in the game. And a turnover. So Louisville making all sorts of mistakes here. And tons of fouls in the second half. It's four turnovers in the last six possessions. Wheeler launching. Got it! Savannah Wheeler's been on fire. 20 points for the 5-6 grad. What a second half she's had. Absolutely. Now, if you're Louisville, you don't have to rush, but you do need to start playing with some pace here as we get under the three-minute mark of this game, down eight. Cochran leaning in now to fall away no and a foul just nothing dropping here in the last couple of quarters for Louisville a very unselfish play by Middle Tennessee to find Courtney Whitson in the corner for yet another three this second half and then who else but Wheeler off the high on ball screen going to a right ring just had enough space to knock it down the bench loves it Whitson picked up the foul, 14 foul for Middle Tennessee. Well, Louisville made a mistake on that line last time they checked in a pass. And Ricard's now to put it in. Cochran again. She'll shoot it, but that's offline. And a foul on the floor, 2.25 to go. Middle Tennessee opening up a 62-54 lead. Fourth foul on Whitson. And so it'll be Louisville to the line. You just saw Coach Enzo motion to Whitson for foul. There's no subbing when it comes to the Blue Raiders. He's just letting her know, play smart, but I'm not taking you out. Louisville with their first points in 528. Now look at all the subs. They have all their warm-up gear on there. They know they're not coming in the game. I go back to the statement. They know who they are. Yes. That is very, very true with this team. Rick has four starters who play 35 or more minutes per game. They are in it for the duration, pretty much. Move will go into this 1 2 2 half court trap. Time out. Time out. Middle Tennessee takes one here. And a little more than two minutes to go as they're closing in on playing into the second round of the NCAA tournament. For the first time since 2007, as they take a 30-second timeout here, we'll keep it right at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, where LSU will take the floor when this one is done. And we'll be taking on Rice. LSU, number three seed, the reigning champions. And they are just dying to get on this court in front of a big crowd at home. And they're in Albany 2, as we call it. And that is on the way in just a couple of moments. A highly entertaining LSU team, a powerhouse offense, ready to get to work against the 14 seed Rice. And they're looking for inspiration. Don't have to look any further than the men's tournament. And Kentucky's loss. And that's the number three seed. Here's Wheeler. 
Giving it up deep in the corner. The swing inside and the bucket. Bodoreva made a tough shot. 64 56. Under two minutes to go. Louisville in deep trouble. They've gone from ahead 18. Ricards will sink the shot. To make it 64 58. Louisville staying in this 1 2 2 trap. Wheeler gives it up. Long one coming and too strong by Scott. One and done. Louisville needs to push here. They don't need threes, but they do need to go quick. Ricards a two pointer, sinks it. So this went back to a four point game. Madden's on the sideline for Middle Tennessee saying slow down. They want to work some clock here. The jumper, Whitson, short. Picked off by Scott. She can't hit it. Another battle for the rebound. And a timeout again for Middle Tennessee. So a 30-second timeout for Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee now with nine offensive rebounds, none bigger than the last two to maintain possession and work a little bit more clock. You see Whitson's just, she's buried right there on the baseline. Quick timeout by the coaching staff. So a reset. Middle Tennessee, two timeouts remaining. Same for the Cardinals. Nine side with fouls to give. Possession arrow to Louisville. The possession arrow will need to change batteries for the second game because it has been used over and over again. But a four point advantage here for Middle Tennessee. If you're just tuning in, they were down as many as 18 points in the first half. They were on the verge of getting blown out, but they held on. They started to hit a lot of shots. The big start for them in the first half was the little junior, Jalen Gregory, who was just on fire in that first half and kept them in it. Absolutely, and if you're wondering, I gotta, I'm assuming Louisville's not looking to foul here, they're gonna play it out, because three of the five players on the floor all have four fouls for the Cardinals. And again, over a minute to go, they don't need to foul, but they must get a stop here. Gregory to put it in. It gets to Wheeler. Under a minute, they turn it over. Cochran to the other end, lays it in. Two-point game. 50 seconds to play. 64-62, Middle Tennessee. Look at the spring and upset here in round one. And a whistle with 40 seconds to go. And that is number five on Curry. And Louisville staying in that 1-2-2, two, two, just swarming the ball with a trap. Cochran shoots the gap. I honestly thought she took off a little too early, but that's the long step that enabled her to get to the rim for the two. And as mentioned, Jenna Curry has fouled out. Big time foul trouble all through the second half for Louisville. They've lost a key player. And now it's Gregory at the line, the best foul shooter in this game. 91%. Little Tennessee up by three. Six for six at the line. Seven for seven. And a timeout. 40.5 seconds to play. Middle Tennessee closing in on a victory over Louisville here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Right now we toss it back to the studio for an update. Here's L. Thanks so much, OB. If you came to this channel expecting to see Virginia Tech facing Marshall, that game is set to tip in about three minutes from now. If this game has not concluded, we'll start on the ESPN app. But again, your 413 matchup is on the way for now. We settle in for a good one in Baton Rouge, OB. Indeed, 6 and 11 L. Louisville, the number six. And are they 40 seconds away from tasting defeat? Jeff Walsh, he's had so many great runs. Louisville's all-time winning as coach. She's been tremendous in the NCAA tournament. 12 trips to the Sweet 16, 8 to the Elite 8, 4 to the Final Four, 2 to the National Championship game. But everybody talked about this game 
And it's a real, real tough contest for a number six seed like Louisville. Absolutely. And I'm one who throws out seeds because it's about matchups. And this was a good draw for Middle Tennessee because of the way it allowed the Bigs to stay at home. Oh, and another mistake just thrown away. They have made some deadly turnovers here down the stretch, haven't they? I don't think this sub can come in for Louisville because no time went off the clock there. None did. And this was a play they worked on yesterday. Unfortunately, pass just not on point at all. So Middle Tennessee will get it. The breakaway here for Gregory, and she wisely decides to run a little bit of clock. Now the tie-up, she got out of that and drew the foul. Another foul against the Cardinals. 34 seconds to go. I go back to what Jeff Wall said yesterday. We have got to score at least 70 points to win this game. Sitting at 62 right now. So that'll send Gregory back to the line. And a miss for her, that's a rarity. Her first one of the day, seven out of eight. Jalen Gregory, the junior, and made the second. Well, they're not calling timeouts. That means they need to go fast. Don't have to settle for the three. Try to get to the rim. Guards with a jumper, six that. She got that done quickly, and now a timeout for Middle Tennessee with 28.3 to go. Top by three points and a fired up Jeff Walls who has never lost in the first round. Well, both teams now with only one time out left in the game. And so this is where it comes down for Louisville. I go for a quick steal. I still think there's enough time that you can try to get the steal because we've seen how good Middle Tennessee's been at the free throw line. Then if you don't get the steal, you got a foul. But I go back to who's he going to put out on the floor because the last time they broke huddle, three of those five players all had four fouls. And he has Cochran out of the game now. So I think they may be fouling. I well, should say foul quick. A spectacular second half comeback for Middle Tennessee. And they can tie for the third greatest comeback in NCAA tournament history for the women if they can lock this one up. Trying to get out of that trap and a whistle with 23.7. And that'll be number five on Ricard. So they've had two players foul out. Louisville has, and again, it'll be Gregory to the line. It's interesting because you know that Louisville was going to trap. However, Jalen Gregory is the one that inbounded the ball, so you know the ball's going back to her as their best free throw shooter. So it was interesting that Louisville didn't have the rotation there to try to prevent that. So Gregory will sing number one, another one coming. Look at all these foul shot attempts. 29 attempts in the game for Middle Tennessee. And Cochran back on in need of offense, Louisville. 69-64. 20 seconds left here. Taylor launches a long one. The rebound is going to be up and in. Russell with the basket. They don't foul yet. Wheeler. Will bounce it here, and finally a foul with 11.1 seconds. A lot of time went off. It was interesting, but I don't think Jeff Walls was saying foul. I think he was truly trying to get the trap and maybe either get the 10-second call or the turnover there. So it'll be Wheeler to the line at 86%. Conference USA Player of the Year. She has looked like that in the second half. She's been just tremendous. And sinks the first one. And that makes it a two-possession ball game now. And makes the pair. To make it 71-66. A timeout with 11 seconds to go. Savannah Wheeler in the second half just made sure that Middle Tennessee was going to be right there. Today's Capital One rewarding performance.
20 points in the second half. She did it as a true point guard, starting off with the assist. She did it with the defense, moving her feet, drawing the charge. And she's done it with a lot of offense for the Blue Raiders. The pull-up jumpers from the high on ball screen. The three-pointers from the high on ball screen. Savannah Wheeler's been really, really special here in the second half. Sure has 22 points and 20 in the second half. When they desperately needed their star, she showed up in a huge way against Louisville here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. And never looked in the first half like she couldn't do it, like the confidence had disappeared. As you said, they came out after just a few minutes of being in the locker room at halftime. And the guess is that, and we're going to ask him after the game, but Rick Insel might have just said, look, there's not a lot of adjustments to be made here. You know, go out and warm up. We know who we are. As you said, they know their identity. Well, I asked him, I said, is there anything different that you're doing against Louisville this time? And he said, no, look at my film from the Conference USA Championship. We're doing everything the same. And that is the reputation of Rick Ensel. He knows who he is. He does what he does. And he does it really well. No final seconds. And they're going to lock him up defensively, too. They've done it with the offense and defense in this second half. Six blocks to Louisville's two in the game. Seven seconds to go. The long jumper, and that's knocked down by Taylor. And another timeout, 71-69. 4.9 seconds to play. And Louisville not quitting on this one. Well, Cochran was open before she went up to set that screen for Taylor, but Taylor knocks it down regardless, and you see Middle immediately call the time out. Nice pass, entry pass there by Russell to make sure that Taylor had time to get that shot off. So that's it for the timeouts. Both teams are out of timeouts. And so here's the ball game for Louisville. You've got to get a turnover here on this entry pass. Only just under five seconds to go. You do not want to put middle back on the free throw line with no timeouts. They cannot advance the ball. And most importantly, if you can't get the still in the inbounds pass, you must foul immediately. Well, Louisville in this quarter, they started out stone cold, two for 12. There's six for eight since then. So they have heated up. Is it in the nick of time? They still have time. 4.9 to go. And a two-point lead from Middle Tennessee. And again, they have won 19 consecutive games. Haven't tasted a loss since December 30. And for Louisville, what is at stake? Made the last six Sweet 16s. And the last five Elite Eights, the only team to do that. Jeff Walls has never lost in the first round as head coach of Louisville. Gregory to get it in. Finally does. Got it in for Scott and a whistle with 3.2 to go. That was close to getting the five second count. And then the Louisville was so close to getting the jump ball called there, but unfortunately, foul called. Scott at the free throw line. And Shooting two. Ice this, yes. yes. Can put this one away right now. To me, it's got 80% foul shooter. And this is the first one. One more shot, but there is life here for the Cardinals. And Jeff Wallace just told his guards, get it and go. They have to. They do not have a timeout. She missed the pair. Russell with a heave. Off the window, off the rim, and that's it. Middle Tennessee hangs on 71 to 69. They have won 20 in a row. They are on to round two in a thriller. How about that comeback? Remarkable. I go back to what we said all along. Middle knows who they are. Louisville had one last chance at it. Russell actually had a chance for one more dribble to make it a little bit shorter, but she was online there just a little bit too much. Heartbreak for Louisville. Middle's going on to celebrate. First NCAA tournament win since 07 for Middle Tennessee. And the third largest comeback win in tournament history. They tie for that. They were down as many as 18 in the first half. Led by Savannah Wheeler and Jalen Gregory. Those two were both sensational. 
And a brilliant come from behind win for Middle Tennessee. So they move on to round two on Sunday on this floor in Baton Rouge against the winner of LSU and Rice, which is coming up in just a moment. 20 straight victories from Middle Tennessee, and they will celebrate tonight. Got to look for some crawfish. Should be easy to get here, 71-69.